Hello, PUBG friends, and welcome to another episode of PUBG Pull-Ups. My name is Matrim. This week, we're going to be looking at PCS5 Americas and how it kicked off in game number one, which ended in a med battle. Yeah, and now <laughs> it's just a heal-off. <laughs> Retal- just kidding, guys. There's not a lot to break down inside of this, but it did get me thinking about how teams use terrain to their advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at three different examples of how PUBG teams use terrain to get the victory. And so to kick everything off, we're going to be looking at the second game of week one where Sonics took a hilltop victory. You can see that SSG and Sonics are caught up just two teams against each other at the top of this hill. SSG is playing towards the top of it, where Sonics starts to use much more of this hillside to their advantage. Using the verticality of the hill peak has merits, but also controlling the low ground provides new firing angles. If you look to the west, there's a little bit more of the hillside that curves back up, and we're going to see that Mime moves into a new firing position to add in a second firing angle that they can now use. While this is going on, Tickleton then uses the south slope to retreat back down next to the vehicles. This provides a third firing angle. With the harassment now coming out from Mime and the other two members from Sonics using a little bit of a hillside dip to their advantage, that means the fact that SSG is now having to play on the southern side of the hill where Tickleton is positioned at. As Space Station Gaming advances, that now opens up Shrimzy in that primary firing position at the top of the hill to begin to unload and get a knock, which Tickleton quickly follows up, and now Sonics have a 2v4 advantage and walk in to finish the fight and take the round victory. In this case, you can see that Sonics understand the terrain next to them and how the team is going to have to counter move around the terrain and the advantage they have and prep a second advantage and a trap waiting to be sprung. So we're going to look at another Sonics fight, which is going to be the end of game number four, where Sonics are fighting around Oasis. This is a really good example on how to read a circle, where it's going to potentially move, and the terrain around it. With the position that's going on, you know that Oasis is going to eat up some of this area, and most likely the circle is not going to end there because it's what? At the round circle six, Sonics already realize that they don't want to rest on their laurels and instead begin to move out take more control of the area around them so that way nobody can approach. You want to have as many different angles that you can to defend from any approaches. In this case, you can see that while Sonics do have a foothold and everybody is having to come to them, in this position, they're forcing everybody to have to fight amongst themselves or Brave making a desperate push right into their firing lines. In either case, Sonic's most likely going to end up the victors of the fight. Now that that's completed, they have complete control over the circle and begin moving out to even more advantages. And the team now has to run out to the blue because they don't want to surrender any more points, allowing Sonics to get the victory. And don't worry, TSM fans, I didn't forget about you. Let's take a quick look at the end of game number seven. Black Tigers, Adapt, Gas Cans, and TSM FTX all have their own set of buildings. Adapt has great cover, but not good vision across the street as the angles that they can peek from come with a very high risk from anybody else shooting. Closest to Adapt, we have Gas Cans, who have a very different terrain. They've got a set of wreckage cars that's all around them and a little bit of building that they can play from. But the issue is they really can't easily move. Black Tigers have almost the exact same building set up as we can see Adapt do, but Black Tigers don't have the same close threats that Gas Cans do, because whenever we look at the aerial view of this, you can see that the way it is set up, we have TSM, FTX, Black Tigers, and a different quarter. Then we've got the road to the south of them, and that's where we see Gas Cans and Adapt. That road makes a line of demarcation between these teams, so the ones that are going to be more towards the north, in this case TSM, as well as Black Tigers, get an extra little bit of safety as nobody wants to run across the road. With all of this said, TSM has a compound that's more varied, has walls around the outside of it to where they can peek. They also have the capabilities to move between different firing angles so that way they can control a lot of what's going on. As Circle 9 starts, it's going to be Black Tigers that begin their move using smokes to get to that closest building that is different from the one that we see them holding down a second ago. TSM feels confident in this and only has Alo hold protection on that wall to keep an eye on them and hold them back. TSM's southern side, though, is going to be held down by Penta, who is looking at gas cans. Gas cans, they're in a little bit of a rough spot. With the smokes out, they're trying to cross, but Penta just gets a bead on him, gets the knock onto one, and that's going to force more of gas cans to move into a damp's position, and a very vicious firefight breaks out. Gas cans now have one member up, and that is going to be Hikerman, who moves into cover after the debacle that was the fight between them and Adapt. And lo and behold, a perfect pitch is going to come out from Purdy Curdy to land right at his feet and take him down, leaving us with just two teams remaining. Black Tigers have moved out of their house and are playing the wall that's just on the outside of it. They do have some smokes down, but notice that TSM is using Molotovs on the other side of it. TSM, not content with just having the firing angles that they have right now, has Purdy smoke across, 
move into Gas Kent's previous position, uses a wall for cover, lines up, and from this point, it's essentially done. TSM has control, Black Tigers go down, and just that little bit of extra vision was all that was needed for TSM FTX. Well, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this deeper look into the macro of PUBG because it is so important in this present meta. Give you an idea on what's happening in the end game circle specifically. Be sure you tune into all the PUBG PCS5 action, figure out who's gonna be making it over to PGC. Till then, I'll see you on the next episode of PUBG Pull-Ups.